Hi everyone, my name is Ben Grist and welcome to this series of videos where we're teaming up with Zealous Ministries at zmin.org, written by my colleague Asha Chi Yi Liang, to give us a bit of a deeper insight into different areas of the Bible. And today's topic is, what is heaven? The English word heaven has been so Christianized that even in non-Christian contexts, it is understood to mean the dwelling place of God. Within Christian circles, heaven has been given different significances which may vary from group to group. So to start off with, we think of heaven as the sky. The words traditionally rendered as heaven or heavens in the English translation of the Bible is the Hebrew word shamaim and the Greek word uranos, which both simply mean sky. In fact, in the English word heaven itself, it literally just means sky. As we read in Genesis chapter 1 verse 30, And to every animal on the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, Shamaim, and to everything that creeps on the earth, which in it is a living soul, every green plant for food, and it was so. And also in Matthew 6 verse 26, Look at the birds of the heaven, Uranos, for they do not sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns, and your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not so much more valuable than them? Actually, biblical thought refers to everything up there as heavens. Therefore, the same Hebrew and Greek words that are used to refer to the place where birds fly is also used to refer to the place where the sun, the moon and the stars are as well. Just as we read in Genesis chapter 15 verse 5. And he brought him outside and said, Look at the heavens, Shamaim, and count the stars if you are able to count them. And he said to them, so shall your seed be. And similarly, in Matthew 24, verse 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, and the stars will fall from the heaven, Uranos, and the powers of the heavens, Uranoi, will be shaken. Next up, we think of heaven as outer space. However, in Genesis chapter one, a clear distinction is made between the domain of birds on one hand and the location of celestial bodies on the other hand, as we see contrasted in Genesis chapter 1 verse 14 and verse 20, where we see, And God said, Let there be light in the expanse of the heavens, to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And God said, Let the water swarm with swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth, across Alpanei, the expanse of the heavens. The Hebrew expression translated across here is alpene, which literally means against the surface of. In other words, while God created celestial bodies in the expanse of the heavens, birds only fly against the surface of the expanse of the heavens and never in the expanse of the heavens in themselves. Therefore, while the same word heavens is used, the heavens in which the birds fly are distinctly different than the heavens in which the celestial bodies, the sun, moon and stars are in outer space. And finally, we think of heaven as God's dwelling place. Because people believed that God was high and lifted up, they used their normative word for sky to refer to the place where God dwells. And by extension, in Psalm 115 verse 3, we read, But our God is in the heavens, Shamaim, all that he pleases he does. And in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, Therefore you pray thus, Our Father, who is in the heavens, Uranoi, may your name be glorified. Of course, God does not dwell physically in a specific place, and neither is heaven a physical place where God dwells. Solomon made this clear in his prayer at the dedication of his temple in 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 27, when he says, For will God truly dwell on the earth? Behold, the heavens and the heavens of the heavens cannot contain you, let alone this house which I have built. While Solomon spread his palms towards the heavens in verse 22, he admits to God that the heavens, meaning the sky, and the heavens of the heavens, meaning outer space, cannot contain him in verse 27. Therefore, the heavens in which God is said to dwell in must be different from which the heavens in which the birds fly in and the heavens in which the sun, moon and stars are located. So in conclusion, while the word heaven in the Bible can mean sky, 
it can refer to one of three things. First, the sky above the earth. Second, outer space above the sky. And third, the dwelling place of God. I hope you liked this video and please feel free to leave a comment below if you've got further thoughts on this. But that's all from me today. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you soon. Bye bye. You've been watching videos with me, Ben Grist. If you enjoyed it, then please do hit that subscribe button. But also, feel free to leave a comment below if there's anything you'd like to see more of in the future. See you soon.